Ah, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under uh, for my um, weekend video. Uh, I just want to bring your attention uh, to something. It's a story uh, that's really freaked me out over the last few days. And then I just want to show you uh, something that uh, I discovered last night. So the true news people have been um, talking about almost nothing else but this uh, for three days. So that's how long uh, the story has been out. And of course, it alarmed me hugely. Uh, and there was nothing very much in the media. This is all related to uh, the story around the uh, hacking of solar winds, which you may have heard about. Um, but this appeared in Politico uh, I think a couple of days ago, nuclear weapons agency breached amid massive cyber onslaught. Hackers ac accessed element systems at the National Nuclear Security Administration, which maintains the US weapons stockpile. The Energy Department and National Nuclear Security Administration, which maintains the US nuclear weapons stockpile have evidence that hackers accessed their networks as part of an extensive espionage operation that has affected at least half a dozen federal agencies, officials directly familiar with the, uh, the matter said. On Tuesday, Department of Energy and NSA Officials began coordinating notifications about the breach to their congressional oversight bodies after being briefed by Rocky Campione, uh, the chief information officer at DOE. Uh, they found suspicious activity in networks belonging to the Federal Agency Regulatory Co Commission, Sandia and Los Alamos National Laboratories in New Mexico um, in Washington. The uh, Office of uh, uh, Secure Transportation at NSA and the Richland Field Office of the DOA. The hackers have been able to do more damage at FRC than the other agencies and the official. There have evidence of highly malicious activity, the official said, but did not elaborate. Well, what True News have been saying is that this is part of a a hack, an ongoing hack uh, that started in March. Anyway, uh, and this appeared today, finally, in uh, Gateway Pundit. I just picked it out because it was such a, um, a stark headline. And this is the, uh, uh, the tweet. Now, just listen to this little extract from Lou Dobbs on, on um, Fox News. Good evening, everybody. The question tonight is just exactly who is in, in control of the U.S. government. As I am speaking to you right now, we know that a number of countries are carrying out ongoing cyber attacks against various agencies and full departments of the U.S. government. The United States is under a full and ongoing assault by at least three nations. Russia is suspected of carrying out the most devastating cyber attack in American history, and it is apparently getting worse by the day. The director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, believes Russia, Iran, and China interfered in the November election as well. Fox News is now told a number of senior intelligence analysts adamantly support the director of national intelligence's assessment that China did indeed seek to influence the presidential race. But there is also resistance within the deep state in the intelligence community in particular trying to contradict the DNI. But of course, the mainstream media is using this to... Uh, if, I mean, nobody really knows who's done it, but of course, the fingers are uh, immediately being pointed um, at, at Russia. 
Uh, this is a headline um, from Daily News. Donald Trump's Pentagon chief stops all transition meetings with Joe Biden, despite the department being under attack from Russian hackers and in charge of vaccine delivery and admit holiday pause, but claims it is cooperating in a fit of peak over leaks. Yeah. And then uh, this is The Guardian, of course. Uh, they uh, always ahead in the, in the scrum, the media scrum. Cyber attack is a brutal reminder of the Russia problem facing Joe Biden analysis. New president must find a way to contain such hyper aggressive behavior from Moscow. And uh, so they go on and say it's Joe Biden's biggest uh, foreign policy headache, as well as confronting the COVID pandemic, the president-elect has to deal with a more familiar problem, Russia. Moscow's meddling in the 2016 US presidential election cast a shadow over US politics for four long years. Now the Kremlin appears to have struck again. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this uh, um, is from, uh, I think, uh, um, oh, I can't remember where it's from. I'll put the link down below. Senators liken hack to Russian invasion. Despite lack of proof, Moscow was involved. Media parroting claim that Russia was involved as fact, Joe Biden promises retaliation for cyber attacks. This was virtually a declaration of war by Russia on the United States, and we should take that seriously. Senator Dick Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, said in an interview with CNN on Wednesday. On Thursday, Durbin uh, called for a response against Moscow on the Senate floor. Um, describing the hack as a virtual invasion. It sounds very much uh, like uh, more diversion from uh, the problems within the United States to me. Now last night um, I was watching a video uh, and um, if I'd had a cup of coffee I probably would have dropped it. Uh, because this is what was being talked about, and it was something that I've never heard about. On the World Economic Forum, uh, Cyber uh, Polygon, and um, yeah, they talk about it, and then this was what they say about it. In 2020, Cyber Polygon became a unique event combining two tracks, the world's largest cybersecurity exercise for corporate technical teams, an online conference featuring uh, senior officials from international organizations and leading corporations. The central theme of the event was a digital pandemic, how to prevent a crisis and to reinforce cybersecurity on all levels. Hence, Cyber Polygon 2020 aimed to develop the team's competencies in repelling cyber attacks, engage the management of global organizations and corporations in the cybersecurity dialogue and raise public awareness in cybersecurity. Now, is it a big quinky dink that within weeks or months, I don't know when this was held, we have a real live um, cyber attack. Um, so listen, to the following uh, and uh, just see whether it fits into the theory of what I call the theory of infinite coincidence, because I don't much believe in, in coincidences or whether there's something more sinister afoot. I believe that there will be another crisis. Uh, it will be more significant. And you know we need to actually start preparing for that now. When we do see this next crisis, it will be faster than what we've seen with COVID. Uh, the exponential growth rate will climb, uh, be much steeper. Uh, the impact will be greater. 
and as a result, the economic and social uh, implications will be even more significant. Even more significant. What is this next crisis that we just heard Jeremy Jurgens, Harvard-educated managing director of the World Economic Forum, describing? Well, now let's hear from Klaus Schwab himself. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack to use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. So I'll just leave it up to you to make up your own mind uh, whether this is all just a huge coincidence um, that we had uh, yet another exercise like uh, event 201 this time looking at a cyber a massive cyber attack and then in December uh, what do we have anyway uh, that's enough from me that's Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under <laughs>